Good afternoon. It's okay to be, to be boisterous and joyful at the same time that we mourn. My name is Paul Klimke. It is my privilege to be here with you today for this time of remembrance, this time of sadness, and this time of mourning. We're gathered together today to remember and celebrate the life of Henry Hank Hansen. And despite the sadness and grief that we may have, we came to celebrate a man that we loved, a man that loved us, a man who was a husband and a father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and as you all saw walking in, secretly Superman, and a friend. He is a man that we will miss. On behalf of Shirley and of their children and the entire family, we want to welcome you here today. We're glad you could be part of this special time. Would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we open this time together, we first want to give thanks to you for the life of Hank Hansen. In your wisdom and in your plan, each of us has had the privilege of being touched by Hank's life, and we are better for it. While we grieve and we are saddened by his death, we are joyful that he is now with you, that he is at peace, and that we have wonderful memories that we can share. As we begin this time of remembering, we pray for your presence. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would comfort us in our loss, strengthen us in our grief. We pray that you would pull us together as family and as friends and unite us around the strengths, the goodness, and the love that we learned by being blessed as we were, by, as, we were as part of Hank's life. We ask this all in the name of our ultimate comforter, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. During our time together today, there's several songs that we're going to share with you. Uh, the first one that we're going to listen to is actually written by Shirley. I'm told it was sometime maybe the late 70s or so that you, that you wrote this, Shirley, somewhere, somewhere around then. And uh, it was written, <laughs> Kevin and I said it was, was not all that long ago to our kids. It was years and years ago. But as you listen to it, you're going to hear words that speak to the lives that Hank and Shirley lived together. And it speaks to the deep love that they had and the life that they lived. Let's listen to Loving the Years Away by Shirley Hansen. I look at you across the table. Marching on 
each one day by day we'll be together sweethearts forever loving the years to share with you some wisdom from the Bible, the words of King Solomon, given to us in the book of Ecclesiastes, starting chapter 3, verse 1. I'm sure you'll recognize it. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. <clears throat> There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Now, if you're of my generation, you might have thought that that wisdom was originally brought to us through the 60s rock group, The Birds, and their song, Turn, Turn, Turn. But as usual, God's wisdom is actually uh, much more timeless than that. As we come together today, we're in the midst of a couple of those times or those seasons. For Hank, it is a season of passing from this life to the next. It is a time for him to put down his struggles and to pick up his reward. It is a time to stop living in a body that, like all of our bodies, puts limitations on us as we get older and begin the race in a brand new body without illness, without weakness, and without limitation. We know this because we know Hank placed his faith in eternity in the hands of God our Father and to the cross of Jesus Christ. As a believer, there's no doubt and there is no uncertainty. There is only the positive certainty of an eternity with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 reads in part, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For our dear friend, father, grandfather, and Shirley's dear husband of over 66 years, 66 years, this is his season, moving forward into glorious eternity, and we celebrate that. For those of us that are left behind with the memory of Hank and of all that he meant to us, it's a different season. As I just read, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance. And that is this time. It is a time to weep and a time to mourn. Too often in our society, when we face death and we try to push ourselves forward only looking at the future, trying to get all of this behind us. That's a mistake. It's a time to be sad and a time to cry. Yes, you will miss your husband, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather. We will miss Hank. We need to embrace that and to experience that and to comfort each other as we go through it to provide the support that we need. But we shouldn't ignore it. That's why scripture ties immediately that this is a time to laugh and a time to dance. Through memories and through the pain, we can remember lots of wonderful things that can make us laugh and feel like dancing. I won't. That's been requested. No dancing for me. It has been my privilege to witness the fruit of Hank and Shirley's life in terms of their offspring. 
I've officiated at several of his grandkids' weddings. You guys are here, good to see you again. I've watched on Facebook as little ones have been born and grow, and when, and when these little ones come along with each birth, we are excited in its occasion of great joy and thanksgiving. There is so much to be grateful for, and if you don't have grandkids yet, when you do, you're gonna get it. Ironically, with each birth, though, comes also this stinging reality that each new life is coming into the world that does have pain, suffering, struggles, trials. Life's lessons are taught through toil, labor, and suffering. And one of those lessons is life is grief, very brief, and death ultimately comes to us all. In our time of sorrow and sadness, we can remember the example that Hank has given us and the commitment of his life to his friends and his family, his strength and love that we got from him. And we can continue on. There's another song the family would like to share with you. It was one of Hank and Shirley's favorites. Uh, let's listen to this song, Because. Lord both of the dead and of the living. 
As I live, says the Lord, every meal shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so that each of us will give an account of himself to God. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. We're now going to have a uh, song presented to you by Sharla Kirshen. And I believe Sharla is Hank's niece, right? Surely you had the love of the ages. We all aspire to be um, like you and, and Hank. Um, you know, the only love I can think of that talks that is God's love for us. So, just blessing you today. Frailty of 
Thank you. Thank you very much. We'd like to have some time now where you can share your remembrances of, of Hank, of your father, of granddad, I think was what he was called, right, granddad? So if you uh, have something you'd like to share, we, we don't even, you don't have to come up here. I can, this place is small enough, you can probably just stand up and talk, or I can bring you a mic. I have kind of a silly one, and you're going to laugh at me, but um, I wasn't around my Uncle Hank when I was younger a whole lot, but um, I know that every single time we went to Grandma and Granddad's house, the first place I wanted to be was in his lap, and I think that says a lot for someone you only see maybe once a year that I felt so comfortable with him. And uh, just recently, um, we had a goat. And I'm not calling Uncle Hank a goat if I wild stretch the imagination. We had somebody name him Henry. And so from that moment forward, Uncle Hank is our goat. So, <laughs> silly, but um, <laughs> what made me, think, made me think of him, so. <laughs> well, it's something to keep in memory, right? He's a really pretty goat. <laughs> but he's fabulous. He's got a big S on his chest, right? Who else has something they'd like to share? Don't be shy. Okay, go ahead. So, both of my Can you just go ahead and stand up and be easy for us to do? <laughs> I'm Lola's granddaughter, and I came to this family through marriage. And two things. One, um, I was three and a half, and I forget that they're not my biological grandparents. That they loved Tammy and I just as much as all the other ones. And to me, that is something incredibly special. And so the second thing is, is we would have grandparents or grandkids weekend at their house, and <laughs> Granddad never yelled. Now, I don't know how Granddad never yelled, because we made it <laughs> and destroyed the house. And we literally had a plastic bowling set. And I think he tried to hide it from us every time. And then we would pull down the hallway, and he would save his man for us, and we would play mailman in the shower. And he never was comfortable with us. And we were just loud and out of control kids. And when we got to be a little too much, he would just shove us outside. <laughs> Smart. He just was truly calm and loving, and I will be Thank you. I think one of the things that I'm going to miss most about Granddad, and I'm sure many of you have experienced these, but his hugs. Mm -hmm. So he didn't come up to you with like a like little noodle hug. It was a huge embrace, and you were going to get squeezed. Like, <laughs> there was no getting out of it. And it wasn't for him to show that he was strong or anything, but he was showing us through his hugs, like his love for us. And he was just, gave the best hugs that we must love. Now you need to pass that on when you get hugs. Oh, no, I'm going to do that. <laughs>
And really, that was the time that we forged these bonds as and these are these are the best friends in my life for my cousins and, and my sister and, and I love you all dearly and, and it all started there. Um, and so uh, those memories are, are cherished. Um, just a couple other quick memories. Uh, recently, there was a picture that had gone by um, a little bit later in my teenage years. Uh, I had the, the blessed opportunity to go to Alaska with my grandfather and my brother, just the four of us. And, uh, and that was a really neat, unique opportunity that a lot of people don't get to have. And, uh, I might have, might have been given whiskey at an age that might have inspiration for all of us as men in just uh, how we should be and the family that we should should raise and uh, I think he would look around and, and be very proud of this family that's here. So. Thank you very much. Anybody else? I just want to can I Oh go ahead. Go ahead. Kevin's going to come up, or some, some of the kids are going to come up and share something. I just wanted to make one other comment. Um, and again, Christopher, thank you for that nice compliment. I really, really appreciate it. It's an honor for me to participate in this way. Um, My girls are going to save me. They're going to what? They're going to do it. They're going to save me. They're going to save you? Well, I figured as much, because you need a lot of saving. <laughs> that's for sure. Just the one, two things that come to my mind listening to this story is, is you know, number one is, you know, as you guys have your families and get older, these are things from your parents and grandparents that are really important to carry on as much as you can, to remember who they were, to remember who they are, to remember things that were important. That's very, very important because that's solid tradition. And the other thing is that, and I think I've, I've, I've probably said this in a couple of your weddings, one of the, the single greatest factor I've seen in making marriages last is where did the parents come from? And you have such wonderful examples in your family of long, solid marriages that that bodes very well for all of you. So it's a great legacy. Your family has an incredible legacy. So, girls? Awesome. Uh, 
this is a tribute that our dad wrote about his dad, uh, our granddad, in memory of Henry Hank Jean Hansen. Most men are modest, and when their summons come to depart this life, would not care to have their friends and loved ones make too much of their virtues in the worldly utterances, preferring rather to let the contribution of their lives minister silently to those whom they have touched. Nevertheless, we are not willing to let some of those thoughts of our hearts go unuttered. Hank Hansen lived a good life. He lived among us and touched our lives with the contact was for our good. He has left an empty spot in our family and the communities he loved so much. A member of the church and community organized to promote the well-being of our family. As a father, friend, neighbor, and wise family elder, he showed kind and unselfish spirit to all of us. He had a quiet, sincere, kindly way of seeking, not his own, but others' good. So many times, I recall the many times he filled in willingly to help family, a neighbor, or perform a Christian deed. Family and friends that knew him well uh, will say he never missed an opportunity to help them, at the church, a total stranger, in every way possible. Hank was a kind, loving father, grandfather, great-grandfather, neighbor, and friend in family, social, and Christian life. Henry Jean Hansen will always remain a living asset to the family members, friends, neighbors, and church he touched and loved. As the hour of life grows late one by one, the parting of our loved ones grieve us. But remember, they are passing through the gate. Henry Jean Hansen was born on May 1st, 1926, near Innavale, Nebraska, the son of Alf Eli Hansen and Aletha Ollie Campbell Hansen. As the second oldest, he outlived his brother Glenn and sisters Joanne, Catherine, and Donna. As we can see by the honor given to him there with the American flag, he was an Army Master Sergeant with the Service Troop 8th Cavalry, 8th Cal Calvary, honorably discharged at Fort Beale, California on the 25th of December, 1946. He was awarded the Asia Pacific Campaign Medal, the World War II Victory Medal, and the Army of Occupation Medal. He is survived by his loving wife of 66 years, Shirley Ann Duncan Hansen, along with three children, Debbie uh, and Bob Sullivan of Mesa, Kevin and Ginger Hansen of Chandler, and, Dor and Dorcas Siskowski, did I do that right? All right of Phoenix, nine grandchildren, Chad, Amy, Christopher, Tammy, Tara, Megan, Ashley, Amber, Clinton, and 18 great-grandchildren, and I'm not gonna name the names, there's one. If you're a great-grandkid, put your hand up. Great-grandkids, put your hand up. All right. That one's there too, okay, sounds good. As, as we come to the end of this service, could I just ask you to stand for the, the benediction? I'm going to read just a verse out of, uh, out of Romans. It's Romans 15, verse 13. And it's something that we can carry with us. Now, the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit and in Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. I'm going to turn this back over to the, uh, the folks from uh, Rest Haven. They've got some instructions and announcements about what's going to happen next in terms of uh, going to the graveside. I don't need fair weather, sunny days with skies of blue, but I like rainy mornings when I'm lying close to you. Early morning now, in the early morning rain Grey clouds crying teardrops Down my window pane Tapping gently on my rooftop Steady soft refrain Early morning light In the early morning rain So let the storm clouds gather We're seeing more and more that serve that great time in our country that are going to their final rest. And I think it's important for 
those of us that I wasn't alive then, I was born sometime after that, but to remember them. Uh, it was an incredible time, absolutely an incredible time. And so many people sacrificed so much during that time, not just the men that went and fought and were wounded and died, but the families back home. And I think that we need to, especially those of us that have grown up in the generation that followed the war, need to always be thinking about that and be grateful. We served in the district. What? He served in his discharge. He was 20 years old. Yeah, he, went, he was served about three years, right? So he went in at 17? Somewhere about that? It's 18 months. Yeah. So, amazing stuff. My father served in World War II as well. Uh, it was kind of interesting. He was on board a ship, the USS Dayton. And I actually posted a note on the uh, families of USS Dayton. And I had his... The son of his commanding officer reached out to me and he said that he had also heard the story about how my father and a couple of his shipmates made some raisin wine, climbed up in the gun turret, were drinking raisin wine and playing poker, and somehow my dad fell overboard. <laughs> so uh, that, that, was, that was one of those things that when I was young, the story was he fell overboard. Then it was, I was up in the gun turret fooling around and he fell overboard. And then I got a little bit older and it was, I was playing poker in the gun turret and it fell overboard. And I was about 20 and yeah, I got drunk in the gun turret and fell overboard. So, <laughs> funny thing how fathers are. So, so we're going to get started. Yeah, go ahead. Paul, can I say a few words? Absolutely, Bob, please. This was a very kind and special thing. Nebraska that uh, you go to every year. And, uh, I was very fortunate in that I was able to learn about Hank's early life and Shirley's early life. Uh, we uh, saw the schools where they went to school. We went to the church where they went to church. We went to the church that uh, they were married in. And not only were we able to do that, but our children and our children's children uh, were able to do that. But this kind and loving man, and that's really what he was, had such a positive influence on everyone's life and everyone that he touched. I personally know that there's not one person here that at some point in time is not going to shed a tear. It's not going to feel a sadness. It's not going to wish that, that he was here uh, uh, to provide guidance, to provide help. Uh, it, it, it never ceased to amaze me that anyone could live their whole life and honestly never say anything bad about anyone. And that was Hank. That was the way he was. He, was, he could find the good in any person, he could find the good in any situation. Uh, he accepted all of us for who we are, uh, with our faults in about. And I have to tell you, and I'm, I'll keep this somewhat short. For me, this particular day in our lives is like putting down a, a book that you just don't want to read. You know, you just want it to. You want it to go on, you want to be able to, to see what the next chapter holds. And there's more chapters, we know that, we all know that. Uh, but there's a, there's a sadness and there's a, an emptiness in my heart today, uh, and for my wife and the rest of the family, that uh, unless you knew Hank the way that we have, and I know many of you do, you can't really know what we lost. Because he was an extraordinary gentleman. Heavenly Father, the death of someone we love and care about is like the death of a part of us. No one else will ever call out from within us quite the same responses and the same feelings or actions or ideas. 
their death is an ending of one part of the story. Lord, as we look back over Hank's life, we ask that what we have received from him, his lessons, his stories, his character, that we would truly appreciate, honor, and remember. And we would continue in our own lives and what and continue in our own lives and what we must lay to rest now and move on. Our love for Hank reminds us that our sharing in one another's lives brings us both support and pain. Our being parted from him reminds us of our own mortality and that your love, O oh Lord, is in fact very eternally enduring. We thank you that our love for Hank draws us together and gives us a new appreciation of one another and of the beauty and fragility of our relationships, which mirror your grace and goodness to us. Father, time's tide may wash Hank's footprints from the shore, but not our love for him, nor the influence that his life has had upon our own, nor the ways in which they will ever be a sign for us of those things which really matter, which are eternal. Hear our prayer, our Heavenly Father. Amen. As we bring Hank to his final resting place, would you say with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this next part, I'm going to read a series of phrases and the response from all of you. I'd like you to say in unison, we lay you down. So let's try it once. We lay you down. That was that's good. Into the darkness and warmth of the earth, into the sadness and smiles of our memories, into the cycle of living and dying and rising again, may you rest in peace, in fulfillment, in loving, and may you run straight home in God's embrace. He was one of the last group to do that. Where you could he actually just he come control the, the streets of Tokyo after the war on horseback. Really? <coughs> That's amazing. I didn't. I didn't one even other know amazing that thing about my dad yeah. was that he was a telegrapher, a telegrapher, telegrapher um, for the railroad, Burlington Northern Railroad, okay. Wyoming, Nebraska, Dakotas, up through there. He was one of the last telegraphers really? to actually communicate with the railroad. By a Morse code. Um, yeah. Everybody else went to other means of communication. <coughs> last mounted cavalry and army. Last wow. In the railroad. Okay. Okay. Kind of a tribute to things that made our country great, right? So, now did he ever teach you guys Morse code? No, but interestingly, when he got upset, he tap, would tap. tap, tap he tap, would tap. tap. Oh, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> things he wouldn't let his mouth, things he wouldn't let come out of his mouth was this thing. <laughs> So if we had a recording of that, we might be surprised. I don't think, I don't know. Not now, not here. Not, not here, not now. Okay.
States Army and a grateful nation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved honorable and faithful service. I ran across a poem that I really like that's written by a, a lady named Pauline Webb, and the title of it is, I Don't Believe in Death. I don't believe in death who comes in silent stealth. He robs us only of a breath, not of a lifetime's wealth. I don't believe in the tomb, imprisons us on earth. It's but another loving womb preparing us for new birth. I do believe in life, empowered from above, till freed from stress and worldly strife, we soar through realms above. I do believe that then, in joy that never ends, we'll all meet again with those loved once more, once again. And we will celebrate with our friends. Thank you for being here. Again, if you'd like to stay for a little bit, please feel free to, or you can head back to the uh, reception area.